Have you ever hit a wall with your edit where you need to show a super specific idea but none of your stock footage fits? Today I'm going to show you a super quick and simple way to get around that problem. I had something I picked up from Lumino's videos and it's essentially going to let you visualize anything you want on the screen uh, no matter how custom it is. And the best thing is, it takes no time to do once you know the workflow. Even if you've never used Blender before, you'll be able to follow along just fine. Okay, so I'm in Blender. Let's go ahead and get started. Just click uh, General on this setting. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and click A on the keyboard and just delete everything in our scene. Up here in your preview window, uh, go ahead and swap this to Modeling instead of Layout just to remove this animation bar at the bottom, which we don't need for now. So for this example, I'm going to be using the Blender Kit plugin and I'm just going to be bringing in a plane. So I'm just going to type in plane. And I actually want to bring in a bus. And I think this one looks pretty good, so I'm going to bring that in. I'm just going to hit X on this because so, we don't need it anymore. And you can see when you import your model, you're going to have a, a kind of an outline around it, or you might have a different point. Um, and this is basically, uh, you can think of it like a null and after effects. And in Blender, they're called empties. So I'm just going to come up here into my uh, outline window here and just hide this for now. And uh, now I'm going to hit Shift A on my keyboard, and that's going to bring up the add menu. And I'm just going to come out here where it says search, or you could just start typing. I'm going to type in camera and go ahead and add that in. Now, if you click the period key on your numpad, that's going to bring you right into it over here. So it just basically zooms us in. Uh, you can see this has a rotation on it. So I'm just going to come over to my side menu. Uh, if it's not open for you, you can just click it right here, or you can also hit in on your keyboard. So I'm just going to set the rotation on this to all zero. Next, I'm going to hit G on my keyboard, and I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, so I want to lock it to the Z axis. So I'm just going to click Z and then I'm going to click Z. That's only going to let me move on the Z axis. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit more. Okay. And now I'm going to hit shift A one more time. And we're going to come under empty and I'm going to give it a cube. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to parent this camera object to this cube object. So we're not controlling the camera directly. We're actually controlling it uh, as like a big, uh, like you would do with a null and after effects. I'll show you later what happens if you don't have this cube, but for now, just know it's super important. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and select the camera and the cube. And we want to make sure the camera is in the deep one chair. Then I'm going to hit Control P on my keyboard, and we're going to do set the parent to object with the cube transform. So now if we move this cube object, our camera is going to move with it. So now that we have that in our scene, we could go ahead and bring our airbus back in. And we can see this is a pretty big model for us. so. We click this uh, controller of the plane here. We just go ahead and hit S on the keyboard and just scale this down so it's a little bit easier and fits in the scene a lot nicer. And then I'm just going to hit Control A and I'm going to apply the scale. Now we can actually do our animation with the camera. So if you hit zero on the numpad of your keyboard, it's going to put you in the camera view. But a better way to do this is if you come to the animation tab and you have a split view uh, by default in this window. If you come over to this panel over here, uh, we can click zero on our numpad and that's going to put us in the camera view and over here we can actually uh, model everything so i'm going to bring our playhead to zero and this is a timeline just like in after effects i'm just going to click this box in the center here and let's go ahead and i want to bring it out so i'm going to lock it to the z-axis and bring it to the front okay so now i want to go ahead and rotate it into the position i want it to be in uh, so the first thing i'm going to do is uh, i want it to come back 90 degrees so if I look up here, I can see I want to rotate around along the X axis. So I'm going to hit four and then I'm going to hit X to constrain it to the X axis. Then I'm going to type 90 and that's going to do it a perfect 90 degrees. And if I look up here once more, I can see the next rotation I want to do is around the Z axis to put it right in the front. So I'm going to hit or and then hit Z on my keyboard. And then I could just type 90 and that's going to, I brought it the other way. So I'm going to do negative 90 and that's going to bring it right head on if you look in this window over here we can see it's directly head on okay so i moved it up just a little bit and now i'm going to come out to 40 frames which is about two seconds because we're in a 25 frame per second composition and i'm just going to bring this directly down and then i'm going to select the scale of this and i'm just going to bring it up so we kind of zoom out with it we come under object transforms i'm going to come back and we need to set the scale back to normal so about like this so I'm going to come over here to 60 and I'm just going to click I and select all channels and that's going to add a keyframe for everything. Okay, so now I'm going to do some, some kind of sideways movement on this camera. So we're kind of coming to a side profile of the plane. So I'm going to come uh, back to my 60 frame and I'm going to come over here on the rotation 
I'm just gonna hover over it and click I. And that's gonna set a keyframe for the current rotation, uh, as you can see down here. So if it's uh, yellow over here, that means a keyframe is set. Uh, if it was gray like it was before, uh, that means we have no keyframe set. So now I'm gonna come over here to the 80, and I'm gonna do that rotation along the Z axis. And I'm also gonna do some positioning with this just so we're getting a complete sad profile of the plane. But I think it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna select everything and bring this out maybe to about 120. So the good thing about this is it's not gonna take any more than five minutes to render uh, just because everything's so light and it's actually a very high quality style. So it looks really good. We're gonna be doing everything in Eevee, uh, which is pretty much a real time uh, render engine. Uh, whereas if you have cycles, it's going to take uh, multiple hours just to render even just a one minute scene. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the animation view and just come back into our modeling view. I'm going to click in on my keyboard just to hide that for now. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit shift A and I'm going to come onto a grease pencil over here. And I'm going to add a collection line art. So we can see immediately that gave us a a stroke around our plane. If I hit zero on my keyboard, that's going to pop me into this camera view uh, where we can see what this is looking like. So the first thing we want to do is come into our materials uh, on the properties panel down here. And where this is black, I'm going to make it all the way white. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, you can also come into this data settings and we can make this stroke width uh, just a little bit smaller as well. So I'm going to double click this and set mine to about 0.5. Okay, the next thing we need to do is the texture of the plane. So uh, it's only going to render these grease pencil where we have our camera at. So that's why it's only showing up on some of this. So I'm going to come over, over here in my uh, preview settings and I'm going to come into the viewport shading, which is going to show us some materials. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get rid of all the materials. So I'm going to come out into my outliner window right here and just drop this down. Then under your bus A320, I'm going to select all of these objects right here. Uh, I'm going to come over here to our material window. If it's not open already, just click this little icon down here for materials. And I'm going to go ahead and hit plus on this. And I'm going to create a new material. I'm just going to leave it default for now. And I'm going to bring this above. And go ahead and click this drop down and just do copy material to select it. I'm just going to go ahead and override all of these other materials. Then click this drop down menu and just hit remove unused slots. So anything that's not being used is just going to get deleted. Okay, somehow it looks like one got left, but I just went ahead and deleted it. Uh, so now your material should be looking like this. And everything's using the same material now. Uh, so I'm going to come under here to the emission. And I'm just going to set this to one. It's going to go ahead and brighten everything up. Uh, now I want to bring in some blacks to this emission. So it might not look too dark immediately. Uh, for now, you can just come under your viewport settings up here and you want to have scene world uh, and then scene lighting both uh, checked. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid off just because it's uh, in the way a little bit. Okay, so now we can come into the world settings right here and we have this color uh, as a deep gray. I'm going to make it a solid black. And it looks like uh, we didn't select one of our materials down here uh, in these engines because I see a Kind of a deep black outline so i'm just going to come into the material settings and delete that as well i'm going to come back in the animation window and i'm just going to preview this animation in the material mode so as you swap between windows you're going to have uh, your viewport settings revert back so just make sure you set them up to be the same and then i'm going to turn that grid off again as well before i show you how to render this out i do want to show you one more thing which is if you ever want to highlight something in your, your scene, like you're, uh, for example, trying to highlight this engine, uh, you can just create a new material. And of course, it's always best practice to name your materials. But for the sake of this, I'm just leaving it as default. I uh, come into your emissions here and I'm going to set this to one. And it sometimes looks nice. I so just do a red color and that's going to really highlight. Uh, let me just delete the other material. So this one actually is being used. So you can see it's it's getting highlighted right here. So. Maybe we want to uh, demonstrate something's wrong with the engine or something like that. Uh, these highlights do good for that. So before you do a final render, you want to come up here and just render a single image and make sure it's looking like what you want it to look like. Uh, so however it looks here, it's going to look in your final image as well. So come over here to your side where it says render and we could change the render properties. Uh, you want to make sure you're in Eevee 
Uh, if you want to, you could turn motion blur on. So you have anti-aliasing, so if you notice in your final window you're getting like really jagged lines, uh, you would mess with this setting for that. Uh, but other than that, uh, everything should be good in terms of window settings. Uh, you just need to come under your output settings now. And you want to select a output folder, and we're going to be doing a PNG sequence. So make sure your settings are like this. You want to select PNG, and you want to have a image sequence. And also on your frame range, uh, I think we only edited up to frame 80. Looks like we went all the way up to frame 120, so I'm just going to set this in to be 120, so we don't render any extra frames. Now you have your output folder, I will just set this to something where you can find it. And this is where your entire image sequence is going to go. So I'm just going to use my temp folder with overwrite turned on, which is completely fine for me. So the good thing about image sequences is if you have a big animation or you have many scenes that you're rendering out, if Lunar crashes like 20 minutes in, uh, you don't actually lose anything. You could just pick right back up at the image you stopped at. So if you stop at, you know, say like the thousandth frame, uh, when you come back in, you would just change this frame start to 1000 and let it run again. So you're not actually having to re-render anything. So to actually do the render, just come up here under render, make sure you save the project and then do render animation. So my export finished. Now I'm going to show you how to import that image sequence into Premiere Pro. So we're going to come file import. And then you want to come to the location. So I had mine in my temp folder, so I'm just going to come there and I'm going to select the first frame of the image sequence and just select right here where it says image sequence. And then once you go ahead and hit open, it's going to go ahead and import all of this for you. So you could just drop it on it to this. So now if we play it back, we have it right here. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you think this is cool and you want more Blender tutorials, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Uh, if you want to watch more tutorials, then click here.